Welcome back to ABC7 Extra. Joining us now is Margo's opponent, former Mayor Oscar Leeser. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Leeser. You and Mr. Margo both had short success uh, during your tenure when it comes to job creation. Can you give me specifics on how you would go about addressing the economic uh, challenges the city will face over the next four years, obviously post-pandemic? Well, it's really important that you talk about the success we've had. In uh, 2017, uh, the Dallas uh, Federal Reserve came out, and they came out with a report that was an independent report that showed that in 2017, the unemployment rate was 3.4, the lowest it'd been in 27 years they've been taking uh, records of it. And they said they gave credit for the 18,000 jobs that our administration had taken, had gotten over the last three years. So it's really important. So the things we did, those four years we were in office, which was going out and bringing companies to El Paso and sometimes having to take El Paso to them is going to be really important. But you know, Saul, you talk about right now, there's so many small businesses that really have either gone out of business or shut their doors. And that is our number one thing that we got to take care of. I don't believe we did the right thing with the care package. And we're looking at a second round of care package. And we need to make sure that we use it the right way. The intention was for you know, frontline responders, the medical responders, and then to go out there and make sure that our small businesses continue to stay open. So I will make sure that we deal and meet with every small business out there to make sure they can stay open and continue to operate in a safe manner. The city is looking to spend $62 million less in 2021 than it did in 2020. We've been warned it will be difficult. It will be a difficult year for cuts. Given that the biggest chunk of the budget goes to salaries, what specific areas would you look to trim? You know, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. The city is looking to spend $62 million less in 2021 than it did in 2020. We've been warned it will be a difficult year for cuts. Given that the biggest chunk of the budget goes to salaries, what specific areas would you look to trim? Well, you know, that's a great question because my whole time I've been running for office, I've talked about a zero budget. And what's a zero budget? A zero budget is that instead of continuing to add to the budget, right now the budget is over a billion dollars and the total debt to the city is over two billion dollars. So what I proposed and we're going to do is we're going to meet very early and we're going to take every department and we're going to look at from zero. We're not going to add on to it, but really it'll make us more efficient and actually give those departments through the whole city enough uh, that we can go over and see what what needs for them to operate and where we can cut to become more efficient and we will save millions and millions of dollars so that's a great question because i've been proposing this since day one all right let's talk about the downtown arena do you want to build it and what is your vision for it well in 2012, the citizens of El Paso overwhelmingly voted for a performing arts center, and we need to we need to come up with a performing arts center. And I've I've proposed that we get a big a jewel of our of our city, which is the Abraham Chavez Theater, and we build it there. We put it there. We redo the Abraham Chavez Theater. We do redo the convention center because it's not a convention center that's really very uh, friendly to conventions. And we need to make sure that we make it friendly to conventions. And like I said, we told the voters that we would build them a uh, performing arts center, and we need to do that. And what better place than to really redo a jewel of our community, which is the Abraham Chavez Theater. Okay, let's move on to a difference that you already admit that you have with Margo and the way that you handle debt. As we've reported, the proposed budget for the 2012 quality of life bond projects was all off. When you were mayor, you said the added cost to complete them should not come from certificates of obligation, but instead should come from the city's annual budget, the general fund. Do you still feel that way? Where would you get the tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars from the general fund to finish the, bro the projects and pay for maintenance and operations? Well, it's really important that in 2012, we went out to the voters and said, we want you to vote over $450 million, almost half a billion dollars of uh, a quality of life bonds. And we need to stay within the guidelines that we told our citizens we would do. And that's what we propose to do. We also told them that if you vote on it, we will not 
by any circumstances give certificates of obligations. And our administration did not do that. The current administration decided that they would do certificates of obligations to bid, build more than we promised the taxpayers. So we need to stay within the guidelines of what we told the taxpayers. We said we wanted $450 million, almost half a billion, and we need to build it and stay within our guidelines. This is your flyer right here. Your flyer says you're in favor of reporting COVID clusters. clusters. The city attorney has said the law does not support that position and there could be a legal risk for not just the city, but personal liability for members of council. When will you go against a recommendation from the city attorney? Or would you go against a recommendation from the city? Well, it was a 4-4 tie. When it was brought up for a vote, it was a 4-4 tie. And it was up to the mayor to let the citizens know whether they would be safe. And the mayor voted against it. I would support to make sure that our citizens are safe. If you look at the law, the law does state that you cannot disclose names because of the HIPAA law. And there's reasons why they would do that. But you can talk about the areas and where it is. And you know what? I can tell you that uh, we keep talking about where it is. And if you look at the CDC guidelines, the CDC guidelines says that, you know, small gatherings, family gatherings and weddings, it's really where a lot of the problems have become. And the mayor thought it was the greatest idea in the world to give out 37 waivers to allow people to have private weddings, private gatherings. And you know what? That's when we started with the spike. That's when we started losing lives. So you know what? I am in favor of making sure that we report it and we report it properly. Let's talk about the fire and police pension funds. The state controller shows the fund ratio, funded ratio for the pensions is 78%. The controller also shows El Paso's unfunded liability for both funds combined is $400 million. Again, that's unfunded liability. With more firefighters and police officers nearing retirement age, what is your plan to address this? You know, we addressed it very well. And uh, we had a, a program, it's called the Forward Drop. And the Forward Drop is where there are officers that are looking to retire, they stay within the system, and they and we continue to build into the fund. And I can tell you that uh, Mr. Grossman, that's in charge of the fund, did a great job and brought it to council. And we worked really close with him for the Forward Drop. And we will continue to do that and make sure that we fund it and it's funded properly. But he really proposed a great program to make sure that not only only the current uh, men and women of our police and fire department were properly taken care of, but that at the end of the day they could retire and come back and work in their same position and continue to get paid and make sure that we continue to fund the program. Mr. Leeser, thank you very much.